In this video, what I want to talk about is some of the big details we just found out about the vault raids coming to Fallout 76. We've known for a while this is going to be the next DLC coming to the game. It's actually an update launching on this coming Tuesday, but they released an article today giving us a lot of details, some positive, some not so positive if you're on consoles, but also there's been a lot of data mines and some of the new information helps us just tie everything together, give us one complete view at what is probably going to be the largest DLC to come to Fallout 76 for for at least the next few months. And outside of that, I'll also be discussing some of the other noteworthy things to occur around the game over the past couple of weeks. So first off, looking at these vault raids, I'm gonna try and give a fairly comprehensive look at what we're getting with these. So looking at some of the in-game information we have right now, some of the new information Bethesda just shared with us, but then finally some of the data mined or leaked information that actually adds a bit of context to all of this. Although before we get into that final segment, I will give a spoiler warning. Coming on August 20th, there's going to be several things dropped actually several large-scale updates for this game. The vault raids, which I'll go quite extensively on in this video. We're also getting display cases, which is just going to be kind of a cool and nice little addition, especially with camp building being such a prominent part of Fallout 76 these days. We're getting the nuclear winter choose your own perk card system. This is something that they talked about teasing more of today in this most recent article, but actually haven't teased anything about. I don't know if they just forgot or if I'm misreading this quote here, but speaking broadly, it's going to make it a bit easier to get the her cards you desire in the nuclear winter game mode, but then the first of Fallout 76's vault raids. So the way these vault raids are going to work is the first one's going to take place at Vault 94. This is an existing in-game location. Some people have actually glitched into this location, giving us a bit of insight as to what exactly it'll look like on the inside, but just in general, there's actually quite a bit of lore around this particular vault compared to some of the other unreleased vaults. And really to break things down pretty simply, basically this was a vault that had an abundance of resources when they were actually sealed up into it, and the people sealed inside actually were a religious congregation, so typically pretty passive fellows that were a little bit overly optimistic about society. And that's not just my own interpretation, the game pretty explicitly describes that, this being notable because one of the resources they didn't receive were weapons. There are no weapons within this vault. And then automatically one year after the bombs dropped, the vault would open, and the vault inhabitants were tasked with actually recruiting other people to help share their resources and to kind of shelter them to some degree. The experiment going on here was to see how this group of relatively peaceful but well-equipped resource-wise people would interact with those from the wasteland that were maybe a little bit more desperate and a little bit more gritty. And at that point, some of the vault ambassadors were sent out around Appalachia. In-game right now, you can actually find a variety of these vault tech ambassadors. You'll just see a vault resident with the Vault 94 logo on their back, and it seems like the location of these guys will actually be relevant when it comes to getting inside of the vault for the vault raids. If you try and get in the vault right now, it'll say you need a pass from one of the vault Vault tech ambassadors. So effectively, it seems like the sequence of events will be, you're going to be able to tune into a certain radio distress signal from the vault, then you'll be able to go to the vault, but see that you actually require one of these passes, and you'll have to find one on a Vault 94 ambassador's body, which will seemingly be all of these corpses you could find around the map. From some other terminal entries, such as those in Harper's Ferry, it seems like a Gek actually went off here, creating a large explosion, but also creating the Mire region, and potentially creating a Far Harbor-like fog in this area that did eventually dissipate. But otherwise, after you've done all that, you should hypothetically be able to get into the vault and kick off your vault raid. The vault inhabitants are now gone, so if you're hoping for human NPCs through this, they seem pretty concretely disconfirmed, but what you will find inside is a ton of overgrown plants. This because one of the tasks to the vault dwellers was actually to regrow some of the local foliage. As described by Bethesda, there's going to be a couple of things you could do in this, obviously the vault raids themselves, but it also seems like there might be some lore in these vaults, trying to find out what exactly happened to these residents. We get some look from the data mine, but again, I don't want to spoil too much about this upcoming quest, but as far as the vault raids themselves go, it's described how these are basically going to be three separate missions that operate on a rotating basis that you complete within these vaults. So you'll show up with however many people you want. You could do these solo, although they're described as being extremely difficult, and in fact, one of the most difficult challenges in the game thus far, and that you really should be doing this with a full team of level 50 plus characters. But even further, as you start, there's actually going to be three difficulty modes you could choose from. From. Novice, Standard, or Expert. The Novice difficulty will have no time restrictions at all. Standard and Expert modes will, with Expert probably having the most restricted time allotment. But unlike previous dungeons in this game, these will be instanced. So when you enter into this vault, it's almost like you're on a separate world, your own individual vault that you four, if all four of you went in, can explore. And if another group goes in, they'll get a separate instance and a separate world. And this actually carries quite a heavy influence. First and foremost, you can't just use power in numbers. It's not like you can invite eight people to clear out these vault raids 
upgrades, even though that might make them quite a bit easier. As we'll talk about in a moment, the rewards are actually determined by the difficulty level. So if you can't complete it on the highest difficulty, you may not be able to get some of the best rewards. But even further, this instancing technology is actually something they're planning on using quite heavily in the Wastelanders DLC. As such, it'll be pretty interesting to see how well it works now and it'll give us an insight as to what's to come later. But speaking about how well it's actually going to work, this is something Bethesda is concerned with also. And as such, even though Patch 12 overall is releasing concurrently on PC, Xbox One, and PS4, the Vault Raids themselves will only release on PC on August 20th. They basically describe how this instancing technology is very new, and they want to see if it runs smoothly first. If it does run smoothly on PC, the Vault Raids will drop on consoles just a couple of days later. But if it doesn't run smooth on PC, if it leads to a lot of issues or problems, they may actually pull it from PC, try and apply fixes, and test it again before coming to consoles. So the reason they're doing this whole staggered release approach is, it's actually a lot easier to hotfix and manage things on PC compared to consoles. There's no process of getting those updates approved by Sony or Microsoft. They're just direct to the player and to their own servers. And I would say there's really two ways of looking at this. I'm happy they're doing this because obviously we want less buggy updates. This is one way of kind of testing it so a decent chunk of the community will get a more polished experience initially. At the same time, this is definitely one of those examples where they should be testing this on a public test server. Not not necessarily on the live PC servers. So overall, I'm kind of happy to hear this. Hopefully everything goes pretty smoothly on release. It would be nice if this could have been tested alternatively or again on a public test server instead of just on release. But I guess further testing is definitely nice, especially considering how buggy some of the recent updates have been. But that's actually not it. On release, we're actually just getting one of the three missions that will come with this DLC, or really specifically with this vault in particular. Vault 94 is gonna have three separate missions, that being Dead in the Water, Meltdown and Washout. On release, we're going to get Dead in the Water, and then one week later we'll get Meltdown, and one week after that we'll get Washout. They describe during those one week later segments, there'll be a three hour down period for the vault raids as they transition this, but seemingly the rest of the server will remain up, and then the cycle will reset. So seemingly once every three weeks, your favorite mode will be back. This is both a good and a bad thing. Hopefully after a certain amount of time, like maybe this being out for a couple of months, and the player base actually dies down a little bit for interest on this, they'll just release all three modes at the same time so you could choose as you're entering in but for the first few weeks it definitely will be cool each week on every Tuesday to have some kind of new content or experience around this mode and it'll be pretty interesting to see how much variation there is between these three missions. If you stay to the data mine section I'll actually talk a little bit about what these missions entail as we have a pretty good idea of that. So as far as the rewards go for this mode we've heard in the past from QuakeCon you'll be rewarded intermittently so if you just hit a halfway point you will receive a reward of some kind but naturally the best rewards will come from finishing the mode on the best difficulty. They'll have generic rewards like XP, caps, improved repair kits, crafting materials, and then the miscellaneous items, weapons, and armor. And although you can win those by completing the mode on any difficulty, to get some of those new unique items that we've seen in the past, you'll have to complete the mode on expert or standard. And it seems like those new unique rewards are plans to craft the new vault armor sets. And we get an official name for this armor, that being the Strangler Heart Armor. And describe how actually crafting this full set will offer special bonuses to the wearer. So probably pretty similar to the excavator power armor, at least based on how it's described here. But there's actually one big twist with this, and I think this is how they're going to hopefully get people to replay this vault raid. Although you could earn the plans just on the standard and expert mode, and then actually unlock crafting of these new armor sets, and it'll likely be you have to craft each armor piece individually based on the images, there's actually going to be a totally new crafting requirement for that armor. So just by completing a vault raid of any difficulty, you're going to be rewarded with Vault 94 Steel, and Vault 94 Steel is going to be required to craft an armor piece. The big caveat being is you could only earn these mission rewards once per difficulty per day, or actually technically per mission if you get the kind of overlap. So what that means is on the day of release, you could play the expert mode, the standard mode, and the novice mode once each for a reward, then you're going to have to wait to the next day till it resets to actually start earning rewards again. But they also describe how this is per mission. So if you play the morning of Tuesday before the mode switch actually occurs, in one day you could play six times for these rewards. Based on the wording of it, it seems like these are the rewards overall, even some of those miscellaneous rewards, but I could see that just being weird wording. And frankly, the rewards you'll actually care about here are the Vault Armor Plans, as well as the Vault 94 Steel. Those are the things you could only get from completing these. So the way I assume this is actually going to work is, there's going to be some RNG associated with actually one, being able to earn the plans to even unlock the 
ability to craft the armor, but then also you're going to need a certain amount of steel to craft this entire set. So let's just say hypothetical numbers. If you complete the mission on expert mode, you get four steel, but maybe to craft the entire set of this armor and actually get the set bonus, you'll need 25 steel in total. Thus, it'll take quite a few days for you to actually get all of the steel you'll need to create a full set. That assuming one, that you're actually successful and two, that you actually have the plans required. But even further, Vault 94 steel and Vault armor plans or pieces are not tradable. So you can't actually just rely on other people completing this and buying or trading with them. You have to do it all on yourself on one account. So getting into some of the leaks or spoiler sections of this, as far as what these missions are going to entail, it's not major spoilers. I'm not going to give away any of the lore, just some of these steps or stages of these three different missions as they've been data mined. Although granted, this is a data mine and it's a fairly old data mine at that. So it is definitely subject to change. It might not exactly match up on release, but it seems like then the water, as the name does suggest, is more or less going to correspond with rising flood levels or floodwaters in the vault. As we've heard described with some of these vault raids in the past, the way this is going to kind of work is you'll have several things you have to do to progress the mission, whether it be repairing pipes or actually gaining access to a certain wing. But all along the way, there'll likely be a ton of enemies attacking you. So you and your squad will probably have to communicate and decide, all right, who's going to try and fend off these foes while I try and gain access or fix some of the things in the engineering wing or the residential wing. In some of these, you could also see certain cooldown periods or like the draining of the vault. So that'll likely just be a certain period where you have to fend off a bunch of creatures as something occurs or maybe defend the reactor core in general. As far as the meltdown mission does go, it's actually going to be pretty similar. All three of these missions have similar themes as to go here, fix this, or gain access to this, defend this for a little while. But meltdown is going to be all about a nuclear event happening, specifically the Gek becoming unstable and you having to fix that and then defend the Gek from enemies. Although that one in particular seems interesting as radiation seemingly plays a role. So actually being well equipped or prepared with a radiation suit or some other method like Radex or power armor to address that seems like it'll be essential to success. Depending on how much of a write-up you get beforehand, it might be good to just run through all of these once on the novice mode to understand what exactly you need to be successful with them, or maybe even which perk cards will help you. For the flooded version, maybe some of those water perk cards will be very beneficial. And then finally with washout, it's pretty similar to the other two. The main difference being that washout features an insect infestation. And also pretty interesting all throughout these, you could actually see certain optional quests you do have or tasks you can do to add additional time to the overall time limit. Taking this all together, it actually sounds like a pretty cool new DLC for Fallout 76. True dungeons and raids are something I know a lot of people have been wanting. I just hope these are truly difficult. I hope on the expert difficulty, you genuinely struggle to complete this if you don't have great gear or great build attuned to whatever mission you're currently doing. Hopefully it requires true coordination between the four people and then as you ease up on the difficulty, going for maybe the standard mode instead, it's a lot more tackleable or more on par with some of the other difficult events out there. But from the descriptions, they certainly sound like they're long and they actually have a lot of steps involved in completing them. The one thing I found kind of interesting, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of unique rewards from this. Whenever they talk about earning armor plans, it's in the plural, but is there more armors than just these two? Like if there's four armors, that'd be pretty cool. But if it's just going to be these two armors, but since you have such heavy restrictions on how many Vault 94 steel you could earn per day, that's what's going to make it take a long time to actually earn those armors. That's not the most ideal, especially when you just compare it to how much visual content is posted to the Atomic Shop on a regular basis. Just adding a couple of armors for free in game with the new event seems fairly doable based on the team they have. But either way, my initial impressions of this are it actually sounds really cool. I'm pretty excited for this. I think it's going to be a very fun in-game event to complete. Although outside of that, as I mentioned, there's a couple of other things I did want to touch on. Right now in game, there's actually a sale going on at the Legendary Vendor. You basically get 25% off everything in here, and this is all an in-game currency, so it's not like Bethesda is properly monetizing this outside of you just buying the game. And more or less, everything is just discounted by 25%. This is actually pretty good timing considering these fairly hardcore looking vault raids are right around the corner, so it is a good time to try and roll for something good you could use during that event. Not too long ago, I talked about how there might be a new weight exploit in the game, specifically showing off this image. Well, it turns out that's actually not new. More or less, the person that reportedly has this camp or owns this camp reached out to me describing that it doesn't seem like there's actually a new weight exploit, but rather this is one of the old weight exploits that has been in the game for a while now and a user that just never got banned. This user described to me that since Vault 76 has its weight limits update, he actually can't add or remove anything from his character, but that he is in fact able to sell items from his stash, many of these things being old duped items. So a little bit of extra context there, that may be something Bethesda forgot
forgot to add in, restricting people on being able to sell items if they're overweight. But also it is good news that a new weight exploit doesn't seem to have popped up, rather it's just old users selling some of their duped content. Also in this Inside the Vault, they actually posted a bunch of images with Meat Week stats, so I'll have them linked down below. You're seeing some on screen right now. They definitely are interesting. But otherwise, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you found it informative. I'm going to have a pretty special live stream come this Tuesday with the new update. There's a lot of stuff to try out, and I'm pretty excited for these vault raids. To me at least, they seem like they have a lot of potential. It's one of the first times for this game I feel the need to actually go and play and try and get my character situated before a big DLC drop, making sure I have the right equipment, the right loadout, and for that, I'm actually kind of excited. I think it's kind of cool that Bethesda is implementing this. Hopefully it's something they continue to add on in the future, as they suggested with Vault 96 and potentially even Vault 63. As always again, I thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.